Well, good evening everyone and welcome back to Adam's Fishing. It's the first Sunday since the lockdown on fishing was lifted on Wednesday just gone. It's the uh, first real chance I've had to get out on the bank. It's 10 to 9 p.m. and I've just arrived at an empty lake. Whilst I get all this gear unpacked and set up, let me take you back in time to the beginning of this week um, when plans to uh, allow angling were just coming to fruition and uh, I decided to get a few bits and pieces ready in the shed. Um, if you're interested in that, me sorting out some rigs and stuff, then please watch. If not, then fast forward through it and join me back here on the bank where I'm in for an overnight session, hopefully getting amongst some carp. Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to Adam's Fishing. Um, some great news on the fishing front. I've heard that from Wednesday, if I've understood it correctly, um, we in England should be able to get out fishing again. I'm not sure about that, don't quote me on that. You'll have to check local rules and make sure that that's still valid. Um, but it's sounding like Wednesday coming, um, fishing is gonna be back on the agenda. Now, I'm not looking forward to dealing with crowded banks around the lake and loads of people all trying to fish at the same time, tripping over one, one another and that kind of thing, which uh, incidentally is exactly what we should be trying to avoid um, given the current situation with the coronavirus. So I'll play it by ear. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna be one of the first ones rushing out there, but when things have died down a little bit and when I can see there's a, there's a chance of getting a little bit of solitude, I'm definitely going to be getting out somewhere. Um, so what I thought I'd do today here in the shed again um, is just prepare a couple of rigs, um, check my rig wallets, make sure I've got what I'm going to need for a session, be it on um, any of the lakes on my club water. Now I've had no indication that the lakes are reopening yet and this is just in preparation for hopefully some good news on the horizon. So I'm going to check out some rigs and, uh, and hopefully you'll join me. Alright guys, well here's my um, micro barbed rig wallet, um, so all of these are micro barbed hooks. Um, generally I only use three rigs in my fishing um, and those are over here I've got some uh, Ronnie rigs um, and over here I've got some snowman rigs um, with varying lengths of hair to accommodate different sized baits, different bait configurations, but I tend to always um, not always, but very often fish um, a snowman presentation. Um, it's just something that's worked for me well. And uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I suppose, is, is, uh, is what I'm thinking. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the rigs there. The third rig, um, I mentioned there were three, is um, a variation of the snowman rig. It's my um, PVA bag, solid PVA bag rig. If I just grab this wallet here, I've got some tied up. So here's a uh, here's a solid pva bag rig um never used brand new i know that because in this wallet this wallet is for stuff that i've tied but i'm not yet going to use so just some spares if you like that i've tied when i've been on a rig tying session i've got a white piece of paper here because it helps me to see um the rigs probably and specifically be able to see the hook points which is something i'm going to be doing shortly with this lot um but yeah here's the uh, here's a solid pva bag rig it's about four or five inches long of a supple hair braid um down to my in this case size 7 fang x micro barbed hook from nash a fairly long hair on there not massive but fairly long hair on there um, which will accommodate a snowman bait quite nightly nicely i should say and all sit nicely inside um, a little solid pva bag um, i tend to as you guys may have seen use pva bag stems so the pva bag stem would come up here with a lead on and then the whole lot obviously sits inside the bag like so so that's uh, that's one of my rigs that's my um solid pva bag rig um, over here if i take one of these out uh, let's have a look so this is my more traditional snowman rig that wouldn't sit inside a solid pva bag i might use a little mesh bag with this perhaps um, but what we have here is um 
coated braid this time, just stripped away for the last centimetre or so. Same configuration at this end with the size 7 Fang X microbarbed hook. Reasonably long hair to accommodate my, uh, my snowman baits. Um, and up here, um, where it attaches to the lead clip, I've got a anti-tangle sleeve. But that would be my um, standard snowman rig kind of a, a bottom bait or i suppose with it being a snowman it's sort of a wafter type bait i suppose um but that's what i would use um normally for that and the other rig um so rig number three of the three that i mentioned is this it's the ronnie rig and um hopefully you can see here similar situation I didn't have any fluorocarbon or any sort of really stiff material so i've just used coated braid all the way through um on this um hook hook length here on this um uh, rig material here um again the anti-tangle sleeve up this end where it would connect to the lead clip um but down here i have a small bb shot to counterbalance the uh, the weight of the pop-up i tend to use a little threaded um bait screw here for attaching the pop-up and this is a i think it's a size six mugger hook from gardener um, again with a micro barb and i tend to position the rig bead pretty much opposite the point um maybe a little bit down from the point in between the point and the barb um, on the actual hook shank there um, so far I believe I've only caught one carp on the Ronnie rig, but it's fairly new to me. I haven't really used it a lot, something which hopefully I'm gonna use in my fishing soon. The next thing I'm gonna do guys is go through this little lot here because some of these I've actually used, not so with the um, with the Ronnie rigs. I haven't used those, so I know they're good, fresh and sharp, but some of these I've actually used. I don't think I've caught fish on them, but I have cast them into a lake and I just wanna check, cause they've been sat here in the rig wallet doing nothing for a few months. Just wanna check their hook points and maybe if necessary give them a little stroke with the uh, with the sharpening tool here um, if if they're good enough to reuse so uh, that's next on the agenda Okay guys, there's just a couple of checks that I'll do um, of a rig just to check that the hook is still as sharp as it can be. Um, and the first is just a visual one. I literally just look at the hook point um, above this piece of white paper and I can see that this one has got a wickedly sharp point just by looking at it. I would use a magnifier if I could find mine. I've got, I've got it around somewhere, but I can't blow my hands on it. But just with my eye, I can see that that is a nice sharp point. Um, I can also tell from looking at the hair on this one that it's actually unused. I haven't I haven't used this rig, so I, I would expect the point to be nothing but sharp. Um, but the other test that I would do, not that I necessarily would with this one, knowing that it's fresh from the packet, um, is just test it against my nail, just with minimal pressure, just pull on the nail, and that gra that grabs straight away, um, no problem at all. That's that rig is in is in good nick, and I can use that one again. So um, I'll hang that up here. And those are the ones that have passed my inspection and will end up going back into the rig wallet. Um, let's have a look at the next one. Now this one has been used, I can tell, because there's some remnants of boily colouring on, um, on the hair. Now actually the point does look good. Test it on my nail. It grabs, it grabs instantly, so actually that one would be okay too. But just to show you what I would do, um, if not, is I'd take my little hook sharpener here, nothing fancy, I think it's just an NGT one, a little hook file. It's got a little groove that runs down the middle, and all I would do is gripping the uh, the shank of the hook nice, nice and tight, I would just place the hook in that groove keeping it pretty flat i suppose so that the point is not anywhere near the filing surface and then just run the hook away from me along that line making sure i don't go over the hook point as i do so what it does it takes away a tiny amount of metal um, from the uh, from the hook point and hopefully it just hones that hook point all the more i can feel that that one's just great 
yeah I don't think I need to worry about that one that one's going to go on the approved list as well so I've got a few more of those to do um, it's partly about my own confidence really guys isn't it if I'm confident those hooks are as good as they can be as good as I can make them anyway then um, that's one less thing to worry about when I'm on the bank Okay guys, so hopefully that's given you an idea of um, how I check and uh, assess my rigs and make sure they're fit for action um, when I do eventually get out fishing, which hopefully won't be very long at all. Um, I did eventually find my magnifying glass, which certainly helped with uh, checking the hooks and stuff. Just to show you what I've got here, there's my uh, rig wallet of micro barbed rigs. I know they're all sharp now, I'm happy with them all. I did chuck a couple away that had, that had dulled down and even with a, a lick of the sharpener, they, they didn't really get their, um, get their point back um, as well as they should have done. So they went uh, consigned to the dustbin, unfortunately. But these ones are all good. Totally confident with those for when I'm fishing a water that, um, that allows micro barb rigs or that requires micro barb rigs. Um, my other rig wallet is barbless rigs. So I've got a couple of club waters that have barbless only rules. So these are my barbless rigs. Again, I've done the same thing with them. Um, I check them all, um, check the hook points, etc., etc., um, and um, they're all great. Uh, again, there was uh, I think there was just one out of this lot that I that I ditched. Um, the rest of them all good, even though a couple of them needed a little go with the sharpener. But that's my uh, barbless rigs ready for when I go on a barbless water. The next thing I'm going to do um, is prepare uh, my fishing rods. What I haven't done yet is reattached what goes on the uh, what goes on the business end. So this is what I uh, tend to use now is uh, one of these. It's a if I hold it there, you can see it a bit better. It's a hybrid quick change lead clip um, from Corda. Um, I really I really do like these. Um, I've found I've tested tested trialed <laughs> tried lots of uh, lots of different lead clips um, ranging from cheap ones all the way through to these and and other expen more expensive ones um, but these I have found to work the best for the kind of angling that I do and for how I like to fish. Um, what I have um, as well of course is a tail rubber for that particular lead clip and a length of anti-tangle sleeving and again this is the corder one as well actually it's the dark matter so it's um, it's quite heavy sinks well and is really nice and supple and threads quite well onto the line too um, so I've got two I've got two lots of that set up to sort out on two of my rods um, so that's the next thing I'm going to do so hopefully you'll be able to join me um, and see me sort that out something that I tend to do when I've got an opportunity like this when I've got no uh, no rigs um, on the end of the rods here they're completely packed down is to strip off some line from the reels um, I don't do it very often at all but I figured if I take sort of I don't know 20 feet of line off of the um, off of the reel it's not going to massively impact the uh, the sort of um, filling of the spool um, if it did and it dropped and it dropped too low and just didn't look right from a casting perspective and from a tangle perspective and that kind of thing, then I would look at changing the line altogether. But I don't change my line every year. I change it as and when needed. Um, probably, it probably ends up being every couple of years, maybe every few years that line gets changed, which probably isn't enough at all. And some of you, some of you out there will be screaming at me for that. Um, but that's, um, that's what I do. I'm just gonna take off 20 feet or so of line from the end get rid of it uh, reason being is I guess that last sort of I don't know 20 30 feet of line is probably the bit that's going to get um, most damage um, during during a battle and that kind of thing um, if, if it's abraded against anything in the water or, or what have you or it's been kinked or you know maybe knotted and stuff like that so um, yeah I get rid of that every now and then once in a blue moon 
it just gives me a little bit more confidence um, in my line all the way through to the rig end when I am actually casting those rigs out. Once I've done that on both rods, I'll look at getting those um, lead clips, tail rubbers and the anti-tangle tubing attached and then I can pack them down already made up into my rod bag so that when I do go fishing, all that's left to do is clip on some rigs and cast out. back in the comfort of the shed. Time to uh, thread on firstly the anti-tangle tubing which sometimes can be a little bit tricky especially if the tubing is used as this is. It has been used before but hopefully as I've got the camera rolling it will just go through and not cause me any dramas. Let's see. Oh that's great no problem at all. So straight through and out the other side with my main line here. Um, next thing to go on is the tail rubber. Making sure you put it the right way round with the larger end facing towards the, uh, the bottom of the line, the end of the line here. And then one of these, uh, one of these little lead clips that I mentioned earlier I'm going to use here too. Um, I prefer to use, um, if I can, a Palomar knot um, because A, it's easy to tie, and B, it does seem to be really strong. So that's what I'm going to do here. You can look it up. If you Google images for Panama knot, um, you'll see some really good, really good step by steps there for this one. Do just moisten the knot before tightening it down. Really put plenty of pressure on there. I'm using 15 pound main line, so I just want to make sure it's all bedded down nicely. And that looks pretty good to me. Now, when I pull the, I will trim off that, trim off that excess there as well. I'll leave a little tag there, it doesn't matter if there's a little tag, it's a little bit of room for slippage if there is any. So next thing, bring down the tail rubber and then the anti-tangle uh, tubing just slips nicely into the end of that tail rubber so you've got a nice streamlined finished product there ready for uh, clipping a rig on casting out into the lake. The uh, rods are now safely stowed back in the rod bag, ready to go. Um, I really think I'm just about ready now. Um, I need to put some uh, hook baits in a, in, in a bag, um, ready to go with me wherever I end up going. Uh, but one other thing that I did that I thought I was catching on camera, but unfortunately hadn't hit the record button, was tying up some of these little beauties. Um, you will have seen them before if you've watched any of my videos. It's my solid PVA bags. Um, which have uh, caught me some fish in the past. Um, so I've tied up a whole bunch of those. In fact, if I show you inside this bucket, I've tied up a bucket full. Might not be quite as many as it looks. I think there's 15, um, but hey, that'll, that'll get me started, won't it? So uh, brilliant. In terms of readiness, I'm just about there. Let's hope all of this effort translates into at least a carp or two on the bank. Thank you. 
Well, hi everyone and welcome back to the bank. Managed to catch a few bits and pieces on the GoPro, I think. So hopefully you've seen a little bit of the, uh, of the setup, but really I was racing against the light so much that I just thought I'd get it done as quickly as possible and not faff around with the camera too much. What I've ended up with is my left hand rod fished out pretty much um, straight in front of me, just this side of the halfway point across the lake, I suppose. Um, and I put out, um, a few pouches, a fair few pouches of um, some soaked boilies um, over the top of that. It was actually some soaked boilies that I'd had on a previous session and then froze and then they've come out of the freezer and I just wanted to use them up really to be honest. So they've gone out there and then the right hand rod is off to my right hand side sort of in front of uh, that bush that you see, uh, let me just, that bush that you see here, if you step out a, a rod length or so from there into the lake that's where uh, rod number two is fishing for the evening. Um, I've got them both set up as I want them. Cast went pretty well, I think. Um, felt, them, felt them touch down, which was nice. Um, a really nice feeling after so long being away from fishing and casting and that kind of thing. Brilliant to have a couple of rods in the water. Super psyched to be out here. I'm really hoping I get a few carp for my efforts, but what a wonderful evening, nonetheless. It's warm, quiet, you can still hear the birds singing. That's what it's all about. I'm so pleased to be back fishing. You may or may not be able to see it because of the fading light, but behind me, the swim is carnage. I need to tidy up big time. I'm gonna to have to put my head torch on though, because even though you might not be able to tell on this picture, it's actually getting quite dark and I'm going to start tripping over things. So head torch on, get set up, get my little uh, brolly up, ready for the night ahead. Bye. Well guys, it's not exactly the size that I'm after, but it certainly is the species. I finally landed myself a carp after probably three and a half months of lockdown. I'm rewarded with this beauty. Only small, probably only, I don't know, five pounds, but it gets me off the mark. Brilliant to be back out here again. Chuffed to bits with that first fish. I'm gonna get this one slipped back and hope that his great grandmother turns up. Absolutely brilliant. Well guys, I finally sorted the swim out, got the brolly up, got my bed chair sorted and I'm ready for the night ahead. A lovely welcome back to the lake with that little carp to start me off, that little common 
as I said, probably only about five pounds, so not really the size I'm after. But to be fair, I have come to a lake which is is known as the runs water um, on my club, and um, and those runs often come from fish of that sort of size. However, this lake does contain some larger fish. No monsters in here. Probably between ten and fifteen pounds is the absolute top whack that I could hope for. Um, but really hoping that one of those comes along tonight. But yeah, the reason I chose this lake is I wanted to catch a few fish, regardless of size, um, because we've had such a long wait for it, haven't we? Um, I think once I've got that out of my system and I've had a bend in the rod, well, I already have, haven't I? I can go back to um, trying to target some bigger fish on, on bigger lakes. Um, but for now, I'm more than happy to fish this little lake for, uh, for you know, relatively small fish. But uh, it's brilliant to be back out here anyway, and uh, I'm hopeful it won't be long before one of those alarms screams off again. All right then, guys. Well, this isn't actually fish number two. It's fish number five. Um, this is probably the biggest of the bunch, though. Um, the rest of them were really small. Um, a couple of scrappy little commons and one little mirror. Um, but this one, this common, probably six and a half to seven pounds. Absolutely brilliant, going in the right direction and hopefully there's bigger yet to come. Brilliant to be back in amongst them though. Well, flipping heck, it's getting a bit silly now. I can't even keep a rod in the water. It's half past 11, just gone. And this little mirror carp this time has tripped one of the traps. It was a rod that I'd only just recast actually. And uh, this, I think, male mirror was the culprit. Not a biggie, probably only four or five pounds again, but great to get a mirror carp as well as the uh, as well as the commons. Let's hope we can get a, a much bigger one before the night is out. My right hand rod absolutely melted off, and this mirror carp, the biggest of the session. Is, uh, is to blame. Um, she's probably about mm, not quite 10 pounds, maybe nine pounds and a little bit, I would say, I guess. I'm not gonna weigh her. I'm gonna get her back in just a second, but absolutely magic to get another fish. Sure, it's not the same level of reward from catching a, a, a much bigger carp on a, on a perhaps harder water, more difficult water, but I'm not complaining. For my first session back, this is just the job. Let's get this one back where she belongs. And then I think I'm going to turn in for the night. Well, good morning everyone. You may have noticed that I brought the rods in in the early hours and um, they came in so that I could get a decent kip. I've had plenty of fish. I've actually lost count. I think I've had, I've had more than 10, certainly. Nothing bigger than that sort of um, nine pounder that I think was. Um, and I've just flicked the rods back out after having a quick cup of coffee. And about 10 minutes later, the right hand one in front of this bush behind me has rattled off, screaming take, you wouldn't believe it, like a steam train. And this very angry little mirror was the culprit. Lovely looking fish though, beautiful scales on this one. Not a big fish, certainly not, but very special all the same. Lovely markings, really nice to see one in daylight actually, um, after fishing the night. You, you never quite get the same, uh, you never quite get the same look at them in the darkness, do you? But in daylight, 
they're all beautiful to me. I'm going to put this little fella back, flick that rod back out, and uh, maybe I'll make myself a bacon sandwich as a reward. Cheers. Well, everyone, it didn't take long, and the other rod went. And this mirror is the result. I've actually weighed this one because I thought it was pretty close to the £10 mark. I wasn't far off. It's £9 and a few ounces. Biggest one so far for sure. And a real result from this lake. I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm going to fish for a little bit longer because I'd really love to get a £10-pounder. A double-figure fish to start off the season would be absolutely magic. But if not, I'm pretty darn happy with that one nonetheless. Fantastic. Well guys, I just had to show you this fish. Look at the state of that. Little boily munching machine. Tiny, quite possibly the smallest fish I've caught for quite some time. And uh, obviously a little boily muncher by looking at the fat tummy on him. Had taken that snowman bait, fair and square, hooked in the bottom lip. Silly little thing. Very cute though. I'm going to slip it straight back. Well guys, that's it for me. I'm sure you can see the barrow in the background. They're all loaded up, ready to go. It's just coming up to 8 a.m. and I really need to get off. I've got things to do. It's been a wonderful session. It's been great to get out here and get in amongst some fish and catch some. Um, and sometimes that's just what the doctor ordered, isn't it? I think after such a long break away from fishing all I really wanted to do for this session was catch some fish and I've done that I've caught some fish nothing big but great to get some action anyway screaming takes I mean you wouldn't believe it just like ripping line off the reels <laughs> even those small ones it's mad um, so it, it, in that regard it's been really good fun it has been just what the doctor ordered am I completely satisfied well no obviously not um, I didn't get that same sense of satisfaction that you get from catching a big one or catching on a difficult water or something like that. So um, for now, I'd say my uh, my need to get some a quick action is uh, is satisfied. I've caught some fish. I'm pleased with that, and I'm ready now to crack on with the rest of my season, where I'm pr primarily going to be targeting bigger waters for bigger fish. So I'll be using those Ronnie rigs and I'll be using those solid PVA bag setups that I showed you when I was back in the shed as well. Um, that's going to be coming up really soon because I just can't wait to get back out fishing again. If anything, catching these little ones has made me want to go out and catch a big one even more. Um, fishing's brilliant, isn't it? I love it. Great to be back out here, guys. Thanks so much for joining me again. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. And hopefully that'll involve me holding up a much bigger carp. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.